Sonic, the heart of your system. Good morning, as you can see we're still in Russia and we are still testing the 2080 Ti. You already saw the video where we were breaking the record, or not the record, but the high score of Gamers Nexus. So we had 17,500 17, points in Times by Extreme, so we broke that. But during Extreme Overclocking we had some kind of problems, so we were staying at typically minus 130 degrees Celsius uh, pot temperature, so the GPU has, I don't know, like minus 120. But we cannot really go lower because if we go lower in temperature we have always a problem that the thermal paste loses contact to either GPU or the GPU container and therefore the, the thermal transfer between the GPU and the container is really really bad so the temperature in the salt are terrible and the overclocking is also really bad this means we have to heat up we have to reapply the thermal paste and um, you lose a lot of time if this happens, especially in SLI when you're running two GPUs. So what we are trying today is that we will use the same G uh, GPU. That's the second card of what we used yesterday. It still has Cryonaut on there. Uh, it's still the same container that's mounted on here. And we will try to put Carbonaut on there. So that's the thermal pad which, which we showed. So that's a thermal pad which we showed like three months ago and it's a high performance th a thermal pad it has like 0 0.2 millimeter thickness so it's extremely thin and it, typically if you use that and compare it with like cryonaut the result will be worse so the thickness of even 0 0.2 is too much in comparison with a normal thermal paste uh, to have a better resulting temperature but the benefit is that it cannot crack because it just cannot uh, dry out it can also not harden. So we will try and put this on the container and see what happens if we go to like minus 180 what the temperature in result will be. Typically the purpose of this pad is that you would use it for a lower performance part so I don't know like a Ryzen 5 or even on laptops it would be a really really good solution because it cannot dry out so it would always have a very good performance. You will have let's say three degrees less um, or three degrees hotter CPU than using, I don't know, like Cryonaut on a CPU, but it will always stay the same. You don't have to repaste it, which I think is uh, a really good uh, point of this product. So um, that's what you would use it for in a normal PC, for example. And ob obviously application is also really easy because you don't have to spread it. Just put it on the CPU and you're done. So if the GPU container is at about 20 or 21 degrees Celsius, we have about 26, 25, 26, 27 degree GPU temperatures. So that will be our reference point for stock and for the cryonaut. But now I will open the super position benchmark, which has monitoring data on the top right. And then we can check the temperature during super position benchmark. So the GPU temperature is pretty close to 20 degrees Celsius now. It's kind of stable, but it's also very tricky to keep it at one degree Celsius stable uh, with the GPU container, but for reference, we now have like 31 or 32 degrees Celsius at this scene in the superposition benchmark. So we'll now put on carbon out and just do the same scene again and compare this, uh, the temperatures and then go down to like minus 180 and compare again and see how it goes. The thermal pad is mounted and the temperatures are better than I expected, so the temperature difference in GPU-Z while having hot temperature of 20 degrees Celsius is only 2 degrees, so we're only having 2 degrees worse temperatures in GPU-Z, 
And now we will just uh, do superposition again and check what the temperature difference is there. Cooler temperature is still 20 degrees Celsius roughly, plus minus one. And we have about 34, 35, sometimes 36 degrees Celsius. So we have two or three degrees uh, worse temperatures than using Cryonaut. As I said before, considering that Cryonaut is the best paste on the market, I think it's a fair trade-off that having two or three degrees worse temperatures is okay, considering that the thermal pad will not lose performance over time, so you will always have this kind of performance for, I don't know, five, six, seven years, so you don't have to repaste. And now we will cool down the cart, overclock it, and see how it handles uh, the temperature at like minus 160, minus 180. So far it looks quite promising, I would say. Uh, we have minus 74 degrees Celsius on the GPU container right now. I'm just cooling down to like minus 180. Currently, I can only see minus 40 in superposition benchmark. So it doesn't go lower than that, but at minus 64 we had still minus 38 GPU temperature. So there's a certain delta, almost 30 degree delta, but I'm not sure what the delta normally is with Cryonaut. I never checked that to be honest. But I will just keep cooling down to minus 180 and see what the clocks look like. Because we, yesterday we tested this card with Cryonaut and then we had like 2500 megahertz on the GPU and I will just see if we can get close to that or if it will be much worse like 2200 megahertz and then we will know if it's better or worse. We're running full pot, so minus 182 degrees Celsius on the GPU container and it still looks really, really promising. So running 1.35 volt across the GPU using the Elmo EVC. So the Elmo EVC is attached with my laptop to the card over I2C and yeah, applied about 1.35 volt to the GPU. The GPU container is full, so we have minus 182, minus 185. So there's a certain tolerance to the, uh, to the temperature measurements. So it can also be mi minus 190, but we cannot go lower because the container is completely filled with liquid nitrogen and that's the maximum we can reach. And I'm currently running about 2400 megahertz on the GPU, 2370. And now I will try how high we can get in comparison to yesterday. Unfortunately, the result on liquid nitrogen is not as good as we expected. So 2370 megahertz passed the benchmark fine then 2400 wouldn't work anymore. It runs for like 15, 16, 17, 17 seconds and then it crashes. And um, it seems like the card is just getting too hot and the thermal pad can probably not remove the heat as, as fast as necessary. So it works for liquid nitrogen, but Cryonaut in the end is still the better solution. So as a summary would be that obviously the product is still perfectly fine for ambient temperature and especially in like notebooks or if you just use a gaming rig. Um, it still has the same performance as like MX2, MX4, but it will never lose its performance over time. It will have the same performance over five, six, seven, eight years. So um, for a gaming rig, I would still recommend to use this, but for liquid nitrogen, it seems like we still have to use Cryonaut. So I, I hope you enjoyed this little insight about uh, Carbonaut. See you soon.